Cloudcast Media presents from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delb and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Cloudcast, coming to you live from the massive studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Just me today, doing a doing an afternoon recording, and today we're we're very lucky to have. Uh, Dan Kahn, who is the newly appointed executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, CNCF, for some of you. Uh, Dan, welcome to the show. Great. Thanks very much for having me. So um, you were recently appointed uh, back first part of June um, to, to being executive director of CNCF, but you've got a long history with the Linux Foundation as an entrepreneur, as a technologist. Give us give us a little bit of your background and and maybe, you know, as just as importantly, you know, why, what, what about the CNCF attracted you to this role and what was appealing to you? Sure. Well, if I go back to uh, ancient history in 1993, I created uh, one of the first internet startups that set up the first music store on the web and conducted the first secure commercial transaction and uh, sold that and then worked for a, a number of other firms along the way, um, big telecoms companies controlled by Craig McCall and I I was a, a venture capitalist in a boutique firm in Palo Alto called Skymood Ventures. And then um, actually hooked up with Jim Zemlin, who's the executive director of the Linux Foundation back in uh, 2006, and helped him uh, merge uh, the two predecessor organizations and kind of put together the original structure of the Linux Foundation and grow that. And uh, I left in 2010 and, and worked on uh, three startups as, as CTO over the last six years and, and did uh, more of the kind of programming chops, um, which has been fun uh, to, to really get to know Node.js and to, to get reimmersed in Ruby on Rails and, and get to play around on AWS and such. But then the opportunity came uh, to, to jump back into the Linux Foundation, which has just grown um, enormously over the last decade and become uh, really much bigger than just Linux. And um, it, it's really a, a foundation of foundations where they um, are providing a home to uh, all sorts of different initiatives where companies want to come together and collaboratively develop technology. And uh, when I came back, that I there's something like 30 different collaborative projects, and, and I kind of looked through several of those. But uh, I, I feel like I got kind of the pick of the litter where the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is, I think, one of the most exciting ventures out there, has just a ton of uh, really good companies behind it and, and also a lot of promise and, and opportunity going forward. And so I, I could walk you through kind of the, the history of that and, and why, why I'm excited about it. Yeah, no, that's that's great. It's always um, It's always very interesting to find i mean there, there there's a unique type of person who uh can uh, you know can has the chops to do the technology can get in can write code has been a cto has helped start companies but then at the same time sort of navigate the the you know kind of complicated world of of the money side of this industry whether it's you know as a startup trying to find money whether it's you know you said working with craig mccall he's run you know huge operations and having to understand where it fits and deal with massive capital, deal with, uh, you know, the other side of a VC. So you, you sound like sort of the perfect sort of person to help, you know, navigate this world, which is, um, you know, this, this intersection between, uh, you know, large enterprises who want to move their businesses forward and, and, and compete with the Airbnbs and Ubers and Netflixes and, and, and then the, the technology side of those, those, uh, you know, Decisions where, where, you know, you've got people like Google, but you've also got small startups and, you know, dozens of small startups and they're, they're all going, look, we, we think we've got great technology. We want to bring these to market. So, you know, having somebody who's been on both sides, that sounds like a perfect fit. Um, you know, the, the, the CNCF kind of got started with, with Kubernetes, the technology Kubernetes. Um, but, but, you know, sort of the terminology cloud native computing is very broad. Um, what do you see? As, as the charter for CNCF, you know, how, how broad should it expand? And, and then, you know, how should it play nicely with, with some of the other founda you know, foundations that are, that are in the Linux, you know, so Cloud Foundry or OpenStack? Where, where do you, where do you kind of look at your boundaries and, and where do you want to see it kind of grow and, and foster? Uh, sure. So I was actually going to start out by saying that um, uh, I, I think one of the, the tricks to, to successfully working in a foundation and in an organization like this is to be uh, self-effacing and, and 
uh, appreciate that that we don't have all the answers, and that uh, a lot of the, the challenge is to, to kind of interact with um, people and, and and kind of try and form a mental Venn diagram of where everybody's priorities and and and, and beliefs are, and, and where there's overlap, and we can get agreement, and, and where there's not, and, and we might need to hold off for a while. And so uh, that would probably um, counteract my uh, answer to say that. Uh, my goal for uh, the Cloud Native Foundation is is global domination, and we think that <laughs> uh, eventually all foundations and all technology should be absorbed into it. But um, more seriously, let, let me sort of step back and, and, and give you my, my very brief history of um, cloud technology. And, and, and admittedly, um, th- this is um, super abridged. Sure. But uh, you sort of go back to 2000, and you had Sun selling all these servers and being the dot and dot com. And then uh, you had VMware come along and say, hey, you know, a ton of these servers are only being used uh, 3% utilization. You could virtualize things and start um, saving a lot of money. And then you had uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, come in and, and, and uh just uh, dr- dr- uh, totally upend the industry yep. on the ability to, to move from uh, hardware being a capital cost to, to it being an operating expense. And then, um, you, you know, when I, I look at that trajectory, I, I, I think you had OpenStack come along about six years ago and say, hey, uh, AWS has a great project and product and, and, and VMware does. Could we create an open source alternative to those um, that allowed kind of any vendor to, to play in the space? And then the, the other part that's been very impactful for me is uh, Heroku, which um, really popularized the concept of a platform as a service or pack has and uh, the kind of magic of for developers of just being able to to type git push Heroku and have their uh, have their ser- have their code uh, automatically deployed and I'll, I'll just give a, a quick shout out to um, a book I love Rails tutorial which um, you can buy but it's also available free on the web and it teaches programming and how to use Ruby on Rails and I think one of the most powerful things about it is in the first chapter it explains how to create a GitHub account and then how to create a free Heroku account and actually gets your um, initial kind of Hello World app up on the web in the first chapter. And, and that, that kind of magic, I, I think, is really important for, for trying to get people to be bitten by the programming bug. Yep. And so um, then you had, uh, again, in my bridge history, uh, Cloud Foundry come along and say, OK, we're going to take this PaaS and, um, again, create an open source alternative to it that that multiple people can run on. And so with OpenStack, the kind of medium of interoperability that it was built around were, were virtual machines, VMs. And with um, uh, Cloud Foundry, it, it was very much this idea of like a Heroku build pack that um, could run a, a 12-factor application. And um, then, uh, you know, just three years ago, Docker came along. And has, again, kind of upended the industry and and I think has really um, been one of the most historic uptakes of a new technology where um, for just so many developers have found this by word of mouth and and, um, downloaded it and just found that it it made their development environments completely replicatable. And, you know, I had the experience just in my last startup where even when I was buying Macs for people and I'd very carefully put together these directions – um, and I'd hire a new uh, team member, and it would still take them half a day. And uh, you know, El Capitan had come along, and some some version of it was incompatible. And to just try and get them to even even to that uh, initial point of having the application up and running, and so that that Docker solution around immutability and layering and and all the other pieces has has completely won over the development world. But then the question arose of, okay, now now that our apps are Dockerized, how do we actually deploy that? And I, I think that's been the real question of, of cloud native, and that's why the foundation was created to look at these um, – uh, new technologies and, and the three components are uh, containerized, which which really today means that you you've built it around Docker, that it's um, dynamically managed, and so that's the idea that I'm not just creating you know three front end servers and two back end databases and leaving that static because my demand is going to uh, vary based on time of day or or flash sales or other sorts of things. Um, and I, I want the ability to um, have my 
uh, services uh, best utilized on, on the machines available. And then uh, the third part is microservices. And, and this is the other huge trend in computing right now where uh, you used to have these big monolithic applications, whether they were Java or Rails or other pieces. And that works great with a small dev team. But when you get big enough, you find that uh, everybody trying to work on the same app just winds up stepping on each other. Yep. And uh, there's just this natural impulse to start shaving off pieces of the app and uh, putting those on a different development schedule, often a different language, uh, a different platform. And then those different parts of the app all need to communicate. And so trying to figure out if I have, uh, if I've cut up my app into multiple different pieces and they're all in containers, how do I deploy them? How do they communicate? How are the resources allocated for them? Yeah, no, I I think that's great. I I think, you know, the, the, the takeaway, uh, you know, that I'm sort of hearing as, as you saying that is, um, you know, we, we continue to sort of build on, on the shoulder of, of giants or some of the, the early, early lighthouses for, for how computing changes. So like you said, whether it's an AWS or a Heroku or even just, you know, what VMware and Docker have done to sort of abstract things. But, you know, the, the real goal then becomes how do I, uh, you know, continue to evolve these technologies? How do I make them so that um, anybody can run them, um, you know, so they've got choice and then how do I how do I bring this to the masses? You know, how do I make it so there's a marketplace of people who uh, who deliver these technologies to the market and, and customers then have choice and so forth? Right. There's an acronym in this space, uh, Giphy, which uh, stands for Google Infrastructure for Everyone Else. Yep. Yep. And, um, you know, that that is part of the history of cloud native is that Google has been working with containers for over 10 years now. And, um, you know, these numbers are, are very rough, but um, the, certainly folks have, have talked about how the typical application server out there tends to be at, at, at well at below 15% utilization, that it's just harder to, to run servers faster than that because you don't want to overload it. You don't know exactly what uh, your demand is going to be. And Google has, in, in times past, uh, stated that they run their infrastructure at uh, over 60%. I've heard as high as 75% utilization by essentially packing the containers in, uh, packing multiple different kinds of jobs that, that that need different kinds of resources. And so if, if those numbers are correct, it, it implies that this, this mechanism for deploying infrastructure can essentially give you one-fourth or even one-fifth the costs of the more traditional yeah. uh, way of deploying. And, and the argument is that with other, with lots of companies going this direction, really everybody needs to, if, if they want to have their costs at a point where they can compete. Right, right. Now that makes, that makes total sense. Now, you know, foundations are, are always a little bit tricky. Um, you know, you've, you're sort of, you have this balance between, um, you know, wanting to encourage the, the technology to advance, taking advantage of, of community resources and, and community insight to grow it. But at the same time, uh, you know, and you can look at the, the foundation, you know, the list of, of members of any foundation and you go, boy, there's a lot of market competition there. How do you see your role as, as executive director trying to, to, to facilitate that balance? What's, you know, what's a day in the life look like? How do you try and help set maybe agendas or just, you know, kind of ways of operating. How, how do you, you know, maybe people sometimes say, you know, sort of play adult amongst all these, mm-hmm. these competing, you know, what, what, how do you think about that? Sure. Uh, I guess a quote from Barack Obama uh, comes to mind that um, my job is convincing people of things that are actually in their best interest. Yeah. And um, that definitely can be um, harder than, uh, than it seems sometimes. Um, but like I, I mentioned before, with this image of Venn diagrams, the reality is that uh, there are a lot of areas where our members agree, and then there's some that are more contentious and, and just trying to piece that out with folks. So I, I do have a number of conference calls, but um, I think one of the, the biggest values that I can add is uh, more of a one-on-one conversation with our different members. Uh, we have a governing board. We have an end user board. We have a, a technical oversight committee of um, of top architects and, and just trying to understand where different people are at, where their priorities are, um, and, and the parts where we, we have agreement and can move forward. And there, there's just kind of a, a facilitation and a, a greasing the wheels aspect that I, I do think is very helpful for the industry to um, to, to try and reach a, a agreement on, on some areas. And yeah. so as a foundation, we're, we're 
um, trying to act as a home and a good steward for a number of technologies and to create some demonstrations of, of how these areas can can work together. Um, you know, one of the challenges for foundations is when, when the Apache Software Foundation spun up, I, I think about 15 years ago, and uh, they were able to come in and say, hey, we're going to offer you a software repository. We're going to offer you a mailing list and issue tracker. And those were expensive things at the time and, and had real value for for projects. But today, uh all the projects uh, are essentially every project in our space is on GitHub, and um, all of those things uh, sort of come without um, even thinking about it. And and so I, I really look at how do we have a value proposition in a post GitHub world, and um, in, in that scenario, it's not about that kind of infrastructure. But it's much more about uh, building a community, creating uh, opportunities for the projects to interact, trying to get the word out about uh, about different projects and, and why they're exciting. Um, a, a lot of projects are interested in, in legal or, or trademark assistance and uh, events and, and, and other areas. And then also really trying to treat each project individually and saying that, um, you know, a, a, a massive project with, with tons of corporate backers like Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, needs different help and, and, and there's different things that we might be able to, to do for them than a smaller one like uh, Prometheus that, that, that uh, came out of, of just uh, end user companies that, that were looking for a, to, to scratch a specific itch. Right, right. No, I think that makes, it makes a ton of sense. And I, I think that perspective in terms of, like you said, convincing people of, of something they, they sort of already know and, and deeply believe in is, is, is critical, just as, just as critical as, as you saying, like, look, a lot of this is just, you know, you've sometimes you just got to have face to face meetings and, and talk to people directly and uh, kind of understand the nuances of, of what drives them and frustrates them. Um, I switch gears a little bit, but in that same vein, um, so this, this past week, uh, the DockerCon event has gone on. Uh, we talked a little bit about Docker being, you know, containers being one of the core technologies. Um, they made a, they made a technology announcement, a roadmap announcement that, um, you know, they're, they're going to, to do some things with their version of orchestration, which, um, you know, some people would look at as being kind of competitive to Kubernetes. Um, others would say, Hey, maybe this limits choice a little bit. When, when things like that happen, um, when, you know, the, the technology landscape shifts and, and, and there can be some confusion um, amongst, you know, member partners about, you know, what's, what's going on in the world. How do, you, how do you think about that? How do you try and give guidance about saying, hey, let's, let's stick to our charter versus saying, hey, let's, let's evaluate what this means to, to the market and our technologies and, and, and keep people from, um, you know, just, just creating chaos when sometimes there's just newness in the market, which is constantly happening? You know, I, I think it is important to realize how new all of these technologies are. And, and um, uh, Kubernetes, Mesos, um, uh, Docker Swarm are, are, are the, the three kind of biggest players in open source around um, container orchestration. Yeah. But, but the reality is that uh, although tons and tons of companies are evaluating these technologies, it, it's actually um, extremely early days in terms of um, folks putting these into production. And so, um, you know, there's just tons of conversations going on between uh, the members of our technical oversight committee. And, um, you know, we had our, our uh, we, we actually had the, the TOC met in uh, at during DockerCon on Tuesday and, and um, Solomon Hikes was there and uh, a, a lot of the key uh, Kubernetes developers and, and others. And it was an extremely civil, positive conversation. And we were much more focused on um, areas of agreement and, and um, things that we were doing on a positive front. There's there's just not any sort of value to having a shouting match or, or big arguments um, about things. I mean, I think one of the kind of basics of a foundation is you do have competitors sitting around a table and, and those companies are going to be um, sometimes competing in parts of their stack, but there, there tends to be very wide agreement in, in other parts of the stack. Yeah. And, and then the other piece is just 
just being aware that that this is going to shift over time, and, and that even with uh, announcements, that that um, it can actually be a little hard to predict where where folks are going to be three months for, or six months from now. So I think everybody sees the value in keeping the lines of communication open and uh, and looking for opportunities for alignment. Right. No, I think it makes sense. It's a the the trick in our industry, especially these days, with things moving so fast, is is you know sometimes uh, trying to to segment out the signal from the noise uh but also you know sometimes it's it's worthwhile to step back and say look you know we, we don't need to make a decision so quickly we don't need to respond to every every blip in the marketplace and uh and like you said uh, it the the sentiment tends to move fast the software doesn't isn't always the fastest to develop and sometimes it's good to sort of let those two natural forces you know just sort of work their course um, you mentioned, uh, you know, not only do you have a, a technical advisory board, a set of architects that are that are helping to shape this, but you've got a customer advisory board. Um, I know you're you're new in the role, but how what what do you expect to be? You know, how frequently you're out talking to end customers and users. You know, how do you expect to take feedback from them? How will you get that back into uh, you know the activities of of the CNCF? Sure, and, and the CNCF was structured in, in a um, I, I guess the you, you could call it a Baroque way, but um, I, I, I would emphasize that it, it was created with with multiple different structures, um, specifically so that it was not just a kind of vendor driven organization where the folks paying the most money got to have their way. And so what, what's interesting is that, that we have a governing board, which is mainly the vendors, uh, the, the 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 biggest companies. Um, who are funding the organization and and they certainly get a large say in uh, where our budget goes and and the kind of marketing that we do but uh, that's not the group that actually can can adopt new projects in so we the, the, they were very explicit in creating the charter of our organization that we have a sec- separate technical oversight committee which has gotten really um uh, just a fantastic group of of extremely thoughtful architects from from uh, really some of the best known companies and and also some outside um, folks who who don't necessarily have a side here um, and they come together and and look at these technologies and they're the ones that can actually vote to to adopt projects and and um, do things like blessing a reference stack or or issuing a standard so those are the the two kind of um, main parts but the the idea is that those are also counterbalanced by an end user committee and we're going to be uh, announcing that uh, the members on that actually in the next a uh, couple weeks, but it, it's really just a fantastic group of companies, uh, people representing uh, really interesting, diverse companies. And the idea is that, that those folks actually have a huge influence, that w- they can come to the TOC uh, and say, hey, uh, y- you know, our, the, the, the kind of CNCF uh, projects and solution set and, and um, direction is is good, but it's, it, it has these big holes in it, and we really want – some advice and some suggestions on on how to do this, and so um, I, I, I'm looking forward to having that end user body um, form up and, and and be able to to start vocalizing because we do realize that you know this is a very new group, a very new foundation, and that we're we're looking for, and I think you'll see us over over the second half of the year start um, pr- bringing in and promoting some projects in spaces like uh, messaging and logging and and possibly storage. Um, that, that fill out more of that stack. But a lot of those uh, choices and directions uh, actually do come from the end user side. Interesting. Very, very cool. Well, listen, I want to be very respectful of your time. Um, you know, sort of last question for folks that want to reach out to you or, you know, get more engaged with, with CNCF or sort of, you know, what should what should people look forward to in the next, I don't know, 30, 60, 90 days? What, what should we be on the lookout for? And, and uh, you know, how would you like people to engage with you uh, around this foundation? Sure. Um, I, I mean, I, I'd say that we really um, are looking to expand significantly. Um, we, uh, I, I would encourage you to come to cncf.io. We, uh, we, we, we just kind of spun up recently, but I think you're going to see us uh, doing a series of blog posts that are, are hopefully going to uh, be really engaging for the cloud community where where we look at different folks that are deploying these technologies and and it's not just a cheerleading function we're very happy to come out and say 
uh, folks tried to do this deployment and here's the problems they ran into or here's the incompatibilities or here's the extra uh, steps that they needed to take to, to work with this uh, this kind of application or this kind of hardware. Um, and, and so we're looking for that to be a home and kind of a, a thought leader. Uh, we, we definitely uh, encourage folks to join as members. I, I'm particularly interested in end users and um, folks who um, – come from, have sort of unique challenges or, or interesting problems that they are, are tackling in the cloud native space and, and would like help with and would like uh, to, to work with us on. We're, we're doing a number of events coming up that I, I'd like to mention. Um, we're we're going to have a, a cloud native track at uh, ContainerCon in uh, Berlin in August and uh, Tokyo in July in Toronto uh, as well in August. And then we're having a, a cloud native con uh, co-hosted with a Kubacon in Seattle in uh, uh, early November. And so all of those are opportunities to, to come and, and, and learn a little bit more about this space to interact with, with me and, and the members of the TOC and governing board and, and user board and, and hopefully to consider uh, joining that you know for uh, uh, particularly for startups, it's um, extremely cost effective way to to get to network with um, a lot of the other folks in the industry. For some of the biggest companies, it's you know a way to to sort of have your finger on the pulse of everything going on technology wise and, and partnerships and such. And um, uh, the you can reach out on that cncf.io website. And uh, I, I or, or someone on my staff are happy to get back to you and, and talk about working together. Outstanding. That's great. We will uh, we'll get a lot of that up into our into our show notes for folks that are that are listening on the road. You can go back and take a look at it. But uh, Dan, thank you so much for the time. Uh, best of luck in the in the new role. And, and we're we're all very very excited to see where uh, you know CNCF goes, where Kubernetes, where all of the cloud native technologies are going to go, and, and what's coming next in the foundation. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, for Dan and for Aaron, folks, thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media. 